We've already got a review on logic and conditionals. This is the second one. We're going to go over much the same material, but also introduce some truth tables with three variables instead of two. So you can see how that works. Okay, so the first section here has truth tables. And the kind of questions that you're going to get on the test are like these down here, where I give you truth values for the variables and I ask you what is the truth value of the expression. Now there are a couple ways to do these. One is to do the whole truth table and then extract the answer. The other one is to just look at it with one set of truth values. So what I'm going to do is uh, do the top row just using the one set and then I'll do the rest of the usual way I do the truth tables by filling out all the values. So our first expression looks like this. It's x and the expression not x or y. Suppose I'm asked to do this one on an exam and I'm asked whether x and I'm given that x, y, and z are all true. Okay. What we want to do is break down this second expression and look at its parts and the first part is not x. So with x being true, not x is false. And now Let's look at not x or y. Well, not x is false, y is true. So this expression overall is true. And now I have x and not x or y. x is true, not x or y is also true. With an and, both pieces have to be true, and they are here, so I get a true. Okay, so that takes care of the first row. I could do each row in a similar way, but let's just go through and uh, do them group by group. So first of all, I can get all the values for not x. It's just the opposite of x. So I'll have false, false, and then true, true. All right, not x or y. At least one of them has to be true for an or, uh, in order to get a true. So here I have not x, false, y also false. So this one is false. Here I have both of them true, so I get a true. And here I have y is false, but not x is true, so I get a true. Now I want to do the and of these guys with x. Remember for and, in order to get a true, both have to be true. So here I've got uh, x is true, but this expression is false, so that's going to give me a false. And for the other two cases, since x is false, I know right away I'm going to get a false, even though the expression is true. So here's my complete truth table. All right, let's do the um, same exercise with the next truth table. Now this one's a little different because what we're doing is generating truth values for two different expressions. This one, not x or not y, and this one, not of the quantity x and y. All right, so let's do what happens when they're both true, x and y. All right, if x and y are both true, then first of all, not x is false. So looking at this, I want to get not x, get not y, also false. And then, what about the combination? Well, with both of them being false, the or is also false. Now let's look at x and y. x and y are both true, so this is true. And now if I take the not of that expression, I'll get a false. Okay. Now let's do it um, column by column from here on out. So first of all, with not x, I do the opposite of x. So I'll get false, false, and then true, true. Okay, with not y, the opposite of y. So I'll just put in the opposite values here. False, true, false, true. All right, not x or not y. This is an or, so it's true if either one or both is true. That's, so this one's true, this one's true, and this one's true. Okay, now I want to look at x and y. And the idea there is if they're both true, it's true. Otherwise, it's false. Well, I have a false in each of these other um, rows, so I'm going to get false for the rest of these answers. 
And now I'll do the knot of these, reversing this column, the one for x and y. Okay, I have three pulses in the bottom of this column, so I'll get three trues in the new one. Okay, and the final observation here is that the truth table for this expression, not x and y, is identical to the one for not x or not y. And that proves that these two expressions are logically equivalent, a fact that's often used in reformulating things like database queries to find something that's logically equivalent but quicker to execute on a huge amount of data. Okay, let's look at our third example here. Now here we have three variables. So every time I add a variable, I double the number of combinations of values that I have to consider. It's just like adding a bit. So here, um, let's start again with the first row. I have three trues, and my expression is not x or x and y. Okay, I have the or of two expressions, so I'll compute the values of the two expressions first, and then do the or. So for not x, x is true, so not x is false. For y and c, well, y and c are both true, so their and is also true. And now I want the or of these two expressions. Well, for or, at least one of the, composite, of the components has to be true, and that's true here, so I get it true. All right, so it's the same general idea, um, just more combinations. So let's go down now and uh, do these column by column, so to speak. So first of all, I'm going to do all the ones for not x. And to do that, I'll just reverse the values of x. So false for the first set and true for the second half, just reversing the x column. OK, y and z. Well, that one will be true when both y and z are true. So that's the first row, but not the next three. And then in, in this row, y and z are both true, so I'll get a true. And then uh, not the case for any of the others. Okay, now I want the or of these two expressions. So I'm looking for rows uh, where at least one of them is true to give it a true, otherwise it's false. So you can see in the second row they're both false, so I get a false. Same thing here. Same thing here. In this row, I have both true, actually, so I get a true. And now going down, um, the not x is true, so that'll make the or true. So there's my final answer with, for all the combinations. OK, so this actually goes back. This question one goes back to the first expression we did. It wants to know if x and y are both true, what's the truth value of the expression? And we worked that out, and we got the value true. And then what about this one, not x or x and y, if they're all false? Well, all false is the bottom row here. And you can see the final answer is true. Or instead of doing the whole truth table, again, I could have worked it out piece by piece. x and y is false, not x is true. So the or of those of a true and a false gives me a true. All right, let's go to the next type of question. So here we have one of those if statements with multiple branches. So the point of these questions is to um, see if you understand the way these expressions work. So here we have an if statement, and we're going, OK, um, Mof L equals zero, and then I have if x is less than or equal to five, I do one thing, and blah, blah. Okay, what is the value of Mof L at the end of this if statement if x equals four? Four is less than or equal to five, so immediately this branch gets executed, and we get a 25, which is answer A. What if x equals seven? It's not less than or equal to five, but it is bigger than six. So I'm going to get a 15, which is B. So remember the principle. You go through the choices. The first one that's true, that's the branch you take. There's no going back. OK, what if it equals 12? Well, 12 is not less than or equal to 5. 
it is bigger than 6. So we're going to get the 15, and that's answer B again. But wait, what about this? 12 is also bigger than 10. Doesn't matter, we never got there. Bigger than 6, that's the one we take. Okay, what if x equals 6? This one's kind of interesting. It's not less than or equal to 5. It's not bigger than 6. It's not bigger than 10. So none of these conditions was true, and there's no else case. So that means that Maltvel did not get changed. Its final value was 0, which is D. All right, next comes another one of these. Okay, so Maltvel starts at 10, and then we have tests again. So first of all, what's the value at the end of this if statement if x equals 21? Well, I just look at the tests. 21 is bigger than 20, so in this case I'm going to get a 9, which is answer B. What if it's 16? Well, 16 is not bigger than 20. It's not less than 15. It's not less than 12. So none of these is true. There's no else case. If there were, I would get that value. But since there's not, mult value doesn't get changed. It remains a 10. So the answer here is A. What if x equals 13? Well, it's not bigger than 20, but it is less than 15. So I'm going to get the 8. That's answer C. Okay, finally, what if x equals 11? Not bigger than 20, but it is less than 15. So I take that branch, I get the 8, and I get answer C again. It doesn't matter that this one was also true. You take the first one you come to. All right. Final one. X equals 5, and then we have some questions, and we want to know what what gets printed in the list box. So x equals 5. Is it 5 less than or equal to 3? No, so we don't do that one. Is 5 bigger than 3? Yes. So we're going to print greater. And that's answer C. Okay. Now you'll notice that it's also true that x equals 5. But remember, these are exclusive. They're mutually exclusive. As soon as you pick one, you're done with the if. You're out of it. You don't go back and look at anything. So you will never going to even look at this test for x equal 5. It just won't get done. So we are only going to print the greater, not the greater and equal. Okay, there's code for this in the, in the workbook called the final review. And that's posted on the site. So you can use that to help you as you go through these. If you want to play around, change the questions a little, see if you can predict the answer, and then go ahead and try it, run it, and see what the real answer is, that will give you a way to do some extra reviewing.